The black-tailed prairie dog is considered a keystone species because it maintains a short grass prairie. It doesn't like anything tall over its head because it doesn't allow it to see a predator coming in on it. So it's gonna keep the brush removed. It keeps the little mesquites from growing too tall. But it keeps it as a short grass prairie, which to a lot of other species, that's what they need. That's where they like to feed you. Over 150 species of animals benefit from the habitats that prairie dogs create. These include many birds, both resident and migratory. After prairie dogs eat down the vegetation, the fresh regrowth is attractive to many animals, especially deer. You won't see deer laying out in this pasture in the daytime, but at night, this pasture may be full of deer feeding on the shark forbs that are growing that the prairie dogs eat off. Some animals make use of abandoned prairie dog burrows, like rattlesnakes, jackrabbits, and a very small owl. A burrowing owl needs the hole for its nesting and for its cover. So you'll see burrowing owls come into a prairie dog town because they need those holes and a lot of species that are declining, like burrowing owls, is a result of not having those holes to nest in and for cover that they need. Prairie dogs are rodents, like squirrels, and as such, find themselves on the menu of a variety of animals. They're a food source for a lot of predator-type animals. And a common one, of course, is a black-footed ferret, which almost all it eats is prairie dogs. Bobcats eat them. Red-tailed hawks are common predators. And so the way it's set up is that most of them are not gonna make it. Out of the five to seven pups they have once a year, they're lucky if one of those seven makes it to adulthood. Originally, prairie dogs ranged from Southern Canada down through the Great Plains of the United States and into parts of Northern Mexico. It's estimated that before 1800, their population exceeded five billion prairie dogs. Since then, as settlers expanded westward and altered the landscape, prairie dog populations have been reduced by 95%. Some people like prairie dogs and have restored them to their property. We've heard people say, why on earth would you bring those back? They're nuisances. Well, they're not nearly as much of a nuisance as you might think. For one thing, they reproduce only one time a year. They don't produce litters and litters and litters of baby. They're very vulnerable, actually, and, and it's not hard to wipe them out if you want them gone. But other things that we hear are, well, my livestock is going to step in a hole and break their leg. We have livestock that go to the prairie dog towns and choose that part to graze, and we've never had a problem with that. The mounds are actually above ground. You can see them. You're not gonna step in them. And frankly, they don't go straight down. They go at an angle. So I think that's a myth. Now they actually make very beautiful mounds. They live there, they burrow there. They have different types of burrows. They have sleeping burrows. They've got nesting burrows where the babies are. And they've got bathroom burrows. We actually see lots of birds and other animals that come in and eat the scat because it's actually a probiotic. Now, the friend of ours that rescues these prairie dogs told us that, and I thought that was a bunch of hooey, but it's right. They come in just to eat that scat for probiotic. They're very sophisticated in terms of how they live together, and they have sentries that will alert if there's danger. They're just a lot of fun to watch. It's very entertaining. It's fun to watch them roll and tumble and do the jump yips, and you know, when they go, wee! I mean, it's just fun. For more information on prairie dogs, and how to find your local Texas Parks and Wildlife biologists, see the video description below.